everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. This time, we're going to be going over how to build Minecraft walls. So, if you like the video, leave a like. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Leave a comment down below on what you want for another tutorial, and we'll get started. The first thing we need to talk about when we're doing this wall tutorial is we need to talk about what a wall is. A wall is a continuous vertical structure that encloses or divides an area of land. Walls are either used to separate simple things like paths and fields, or for buildings and nations. So, with that in mind, we're going to look at four different types of walls, and our first wall is going to be the rock wall. The rock wall is this first wall that you see before and you're surrounded by iron. This wall is simply made out of cobblestone slabs, in multiple different little rock formations, and it's used to separate paths and fields, most, most generally. So the reason why it looks the way it does is because traditionally, rock walls are used by farmers to separate crops fields from one another. And the way they made these walls is when they were plowing land, they would find rocks in the land and they would put them in walls on the edge of the fields. So it was simply like, They'd be plowing fields, and then they'd find a rock, and they just put it to the side. And then eventually these walls grew to separate different groups of fields or different pathways. The second kind of wall is what we're going to refer to as the town wall. The town wall takes in nature after the rock wall. They're both very naturalistic builds. This one is more natural by the design of how their rocks are placed while this one's more natural in the materials it uses. This one depends more on the wood variants, the wood types, and these, this very subtle addition of bricks on top. The reason it's made out of wood is because towns don't really have enough money or resources to make stone walls, and so it's very easy to get a hold of trees, cut them down, and place them in pillars in order to make a kind of shanty wall. This one is probably more fortified than you'd normally see. You can also make walls just out of pillars, like this, but that one is very much more simplified. It's more of a wall that you'd see around like the beginnings of a village. This one is more of like a fortified town structure. Wall number three is what I'm going to refer to as the arched wall. The arched wall you probably saw in the background before, it's a much more elegant styled wall. And you can see it even has a sort of block gradient going up and down. This gradient here is to give the effect of ageness, but you don't really have to do that. You can all make it out of one, one block. But the reason why it's separate from the town wall is because this one is most likely used in city walls. This one you're going to use for your big settlements, your big fortifications. It's much more imposing and much more elegant. Looks like it's been made by stonemasons, or the blocks have been here for ages, as you can see from the darkness at the bottom, looking like it's older, and it's been there for a long time. And you can also see growth. Little additions like this, like the rocks in growth, give it even more of an age in this field. But this kind of rock, this kind of wall, is more used in the terms of, like, elegant kind of show off a little bit, much like how the gothic tower in the last tutorial was more of a show off kind of wall, so is this one. This wall here is a much more showy off type of wall. It's meant to impose, it's meant to intimidate, but it's also meant to be there to add to the beauty of a build. Your last wall here, wall 4, is going to be called the barrier wall. This fourth wall, the barrier wall, is a lot more imposing and intimidating than the rest of the builds. This build isn't supposed to add to the beauty of the builds around it, it is supposed to be the main focal point. This wall is supposed to be used to intimidate and keep out the enemy. As you can see, the foundations of this wall swoop inwards and then the parapets swoop outward. This gives an arched effect, kind of like an hourglass, and it's used so that people at the top can have a clear view of the bottom without having wall jutting out instead of like it flowing outwards like a ball, it flows inward like an hourglass. As you can see, this build is made out of four basic points. You have the foundation at the bottom, which is made out of that deep slate. That foundation with the tuff behind it is supposed to be like the solid base of the wall. 
that is the point where it's strongest, and it's supporting all of the rest of the build. The next you have is the andesite. The andesite is supposed to be support on top of the base, and it allows for those pillars of spruce to be placed there in order to support the wall that is inside so it doesn't crumble. The next section is going to be that spruce section, the unstripped spruce section. That's going to be one of the main areas where the soldiers are. That's going to be a part where they have archers and crossbowmen ready to defend the walls with those arrow slits. And then the last part, the last section of the wall is called the battlements. And the battlements are where the rest of the soldiers are going to be. These are the guys that have, are on the top right here. They will consistently be archers, and in, in the case of ladders coming up from the bottom, they will also be swordsmen and pikemen ready to defend the walls in case of enemy encroachment on the territory. This wall is by far the most complex out of the four. It's a lot more in-depth and detailed, and it has a lot more purpose to it than the other three. And that's why, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a barrier wall. The other three are kind of simple. With a cobblestone wall, you just have to make a natural looking shape with cobblestone slabs. That's not that hard. All you have to do is start, lar start small, get larger, and end small. With the town walls, all you have to do is use natural looking blocks like stone, hay, all that kind of stuff, materials that a village would use. For the arched wall, you simply have to make arches. But for the barrier wall, you have multiple parts of the wall that you need to have completed in order for it to be realistic. And so, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, the first thing, as we talked about before, that you're going to have to plan out is how big and how large the foundation is going to be and what blocks you're going to use for it. For this one, I'm going to use the same blocks that I used for the original barrier wall. It's going to be deep slate and tough, so I'm going to get those in place now. And the foundation for the wall is finished. So the wall is made out of two segments. You have this lower deep slate level with a bit of basalt because the basalt just works so well with the color scheme. And then you have the upper layer of andesite and tuft. With the andesite and tuft, you can see it's made into vertical pillars of tuft and then horizontal pillars of andesite. This gives the impression that the build is fortified both vertically with the tuft and horizontally with the andesite stairs. The reason why it's so important to make it look like it's fortified is because the walls in real life would need to have some way to put the pressure that their weight is generating into the ground so they don't collapse under their own weight. The pillars at the bottom made out of basalt and the pillars of tuft on the middle give a feel that the weight is being channeled down through the rest of the build and therefore won't collapse. It also sets up foundation for other parts of the build, which next is going to be that wood section that is going to be supporting. So we're going to get that done in three, two, one. And there you go. There's the wood section in now. Now this section is meant to be lighter than the other stone section. So you can put a lot more detail in it and you can make it look a little bit heavier on the wood side because it's actually going to be lighter in reality than the stone sides. So, with this section, you can see it has a lot more detail, a lot more woodwork. That's easier to do because Minecraft obviously has a lot more wood variants than it does stone variants. And when I say stone variants, I mean like steps versus, you know, gates and stuff. But this section is very, very detailed. It's meant to be high up, so it's not going to be hurt that much. But also on the inside, it should be backed, if you're going to build interiors, it should be backed with some kind of stone. So stone walls, probably stone pillars on the walls, and stone flooring and ceiling. All that kind of stuff, right? So, now you have the wood section out of the way, or at least that mid wood section. You're going to now want to build a section on top of it. Now, you could probably skip up to the parapets right now, the battlements, sorry, and you'd be good. That's a pretty tall wall, but as you can see on the previous barrier wall, that one seems to have corridors inside for soldiers. So I'm going to try and attempt to build that now, and it's going to be out of a deeper wood type. So you can see how I use this nice mixture of stripped spruce and stripped dark oak. This one is probably going to be made completely out of spruce logs and dark oak materials because that gives it a darker look it kind of helps travel up so you can see you have dark light light and then dark 
it's a mirror effect. It works very well on builds. You can sometimes also just build lighter and lighter until the top. that way your eyes raise up. That's how gradients work for the most part. If you have something darker at the bottom, something lighter at the top, your eyes will start at the bottom and work your way up. Anyway, with all that little technical eye stuff out of the way, we're going to try and build the next section, which is going to be where soldiers can rest or where soldiers can man the bat uh, man arrow slits. So, three, two, one, and there you go. The last section before the battlements is complete, the arch section, as I'm going to call it right now. Now, you can see this section is made out of archways, which is why it's called the arch section. Um, these archways are composed of two main things. You have this white cross right here which is just a decoration it's not really useful for anything i just think it's good on the design and then you have these arrow slits these arrow slits are so small because eventually if a enemy force was to get this high up in order to take the wall the holes are small so no man can get through them but arrows from archers posted inside the wall can shoot out also crossbowmen now, the last section we're going to work on is going to be the battlements. The battlements are the, probably the most important part of the wall, minus the foundation. The foundation keeps the wall up. The battlements give the walls its purpose. These battlements are used for archers and crossbowmen and pikemen in order to keep enemies from the wall, and then eventually, if they get on the wall, to knock them back off. So, battlements are normally have this little embroidery that we have on the barrier wall here. Now, as you can see on the battlements, they have what is called merlons. Merlons is that deep slate layer at the very top, and they are there to protect the soldiers from falling off. Uh, they kind of act as like the handrail of the wall. And then you have this center spot, which you can see from there, which is where the soldiers walk back and forth in order to have enough space. So now, let's build the battlements on here. And there you go. The walls are finished, and I think they look pretty good. It is made out of multiple layers. It has strengthened supports for every single section that look like they could continue downward. And it just, I think it looks pretty good. So, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, this tutorial is not like a 100% this is how you build Minecraft walls. Obviously, I am not the real maker of Minecraft. And even if I was, this tutorial wouldn't be 100% correct. Of course, you can build walls the way you want to build them because honestly some ways are better than mine if you look at like all of the hermits and stuff they have a lot of good design ideas that i can't come close to so just keep that in mind but i hope it helped a lot i hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like uh if you have suggestions for other tutorials to do i would really appreciate them you can leave them down in the comments and if you want to see more of these feel free to hit the subscribe button hit that notification bell as all other YouTubers say, just follow the cliche, honestly. Um, and I will see you all again with the next tutorial. Should be a redstone one. You can see the pattern here. Um, but have a good one, y'all. See you later. This is Alter Peak. Bye-bye.